Hey and welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to be looking at what a tab view is and how we can use it. Now it's possible to use a tab view to easily build onboarding screens in SwiftUI and to learn more about this check out my previous videos building onboarding screens in SwiftUI and refactoring code in SwiftUI as well. In this video we're going to focus on how we can use a tab view to add screens into our app in a tab bar at the bottom. Tab view allows us to easily add a tab bar in SwiftUI to our apps. When you're working with tab views you normally want this to be at the root of your application let's actually create two screens that will feature in our tab view so in our project we'll create a screen one and screen two so let's just create a new swift UI view and we'll call this screen one and then I'm just going to type out some code and then we'll break it down so I'm just going to zoom out, zoom out a bit here so we have our screen one here and it's just simply a v stack and we set the frame and height of it to be infinity giving it a background and we use a clip to make sure that it doesn't overflow where it doesn't need to and within our z stack we just got a text here that says this is screen one we bold the text and we just give it a foreground color of white so this is just so we can easily distinguish that this is screen one just by looking at the color and what we're going to do is repeat the exact same code that we have here except we're just going to change the text and the background color for it to a different color um, and we're going to call this screen two so let's do that now Okay, cool. So as you can see, very similar, except this time the background is pink and the text on the screen just says screen two. So when you're working with tab views, this is normally supposed to be declared at the root of your application. But since Swift UI allows you to create watch and Mac apps easily, you could actually want to think about where you want to put and declare this tab view. But if you're working with an iPhone app only, then it makes sense to declare it all in your window group at the root. But if you're working on a universal app, then you may want to actually extract this logic out into a different type of view so you can easily switch between what the main view is on the screen. So we're going to look at how you would handle this specifically just for iPhone only apps. So in our main app, we're going to create a tab view and add our screens in there. So let's go to our main app here. So it should end in app and then it should look like this where it has the main entry point. And then rather than having our content view here, we're going to delete that and just type out tab view and then within our tab view we're going to add our screens okay cool so now let's actually just run this on the simulator and see what happens because you don't get a swift ui preview for the main app entry so now we've got this running on our simulator you'll notice that we actually don't have anything on the bottom here to actually you know see visually that we can switch between our two screens but if you just tap around on the bottom you'll notice that if you guess it you're able to switch between the two screens but we want to give the user some kind of visual feedback in terms of what screen is currently selected and what screens they can switch between so in order to do this we actually need to give our views within our tab view a tab item and a tab item modifier tells that screen that this is the label that it should use to display within the tab view so let's actually add this in now and then break it down so what we're saying here is we're using a tab item modifier and within the tab item modifier it expects a closure that returns some kind of view. Now in our case we're going to use a label and the label will automatically add in a system image for us and also the text underneath it. So this will actually format the label with the text here and the icon above it and we do the same thing for screen 2. So let's actually look at this. So now when you actually run it, you'll notice now that you actually get some kind of visual feedback telling you that this is screen one and screen two. And it also has a system highlight that tells you which one has been selected. So you can know which is the current active screen that you're looking at as well. Now, when you're actually working with tab views as well, you can actually customize them by adding stuff like badges. So if we wanted to, if you was like receiving a push notification and you wanted to give the user some kind of indication that there's some you know unfinished business on this screen you can actually add a badge to a tab item in order to do this all you need to do is just use the badge modifier on your view so if we just type here badge you'll see here that we have quite a few options so we could use a text we could use a localized string and we can just use a standard um you know string protocol so when i say text here i'm not talking about a string i'm actually talking about an actual text view but 
you can also alternatively as well use a count which is just a number so we're just going to use a number and i'm just going to type in a number 10 so if we rerun this you should notice that we actually have the 10 notification on this screen so if you were to work with some kind of like persistence or notification or whatever you're working with you could actually control the values that are shown on these tabs i actually want to go through how we can switch between our tabs without having to actually tap either one of these tab item at the bottom or tab views so in order to do this we're going to need to work with environment objects since this is the root of our application and will be used within different screens at the root if you want to learn more about environment object then you should check out my video environment object in swift ui so the first thing we need to do is design our model now you could use strings here to uniquely switch between the screens but in our case we're going to use enums purely because they're more type safe so let's add in an enum that allows us to switch between our screens so now we have our enum here screen and we have two cases so one and two so if you had a third screen you could add in another case here called three or you could give them more descriptive names but we're just going to keep it simple in this example and now we need to design our observable object that will be used to monitor and make changes for the screen that is currently presented so let's create a class called tab router and this will be where we write our logic to change screens so what i'm going to do is just simply type this out and then we'll break it down so we have this class here called tab router which is using the observable object protocol so this is our custom source of truth for our tab view and then what we have here is a published property called screen and this is where we're going to listen to changes for the screen that someone wants to go into so we'll get to it in a minute but essentially what we're going to do is bind this property to our tab view so it automatically switches depending on the value inside of here and then we have a function to actually change to a certain screen that someone has selected now what we need to do like i said before is we need to actually bind our screen to our tab view and in order to do that the first thing we need to do is create an instance of our source of truth so we want this to be a state object because we want to create a single instance of this and we don't want it to possibly lose data or be re-rendered so let's create a state object here okay cool so for our state object we've now created an instance of our router that's going to be used to switch between screens and like i said to you before we need our tab view to actually bind to this property so when you're working with tab views it actually has a parameter in the initializer called selection and what this allows you to do is bind a selection to the tab view so if i just scroll down here you'll notice that it takes in a binding so let's actually create this and then we're going to say dollar sign router because we want it to be a binding and then screen so what this is going to do is whenever the selection so whenever this router dot screen changes it's going to check what the value is and then update it to match one of these two screens but you may be wondering how does it know what screen to actually you know switch to and in order to for it to figure that out what we need to do is actually give each screen a unique identifier and we can do this by using the tag modifier on screen one and on screen two so let's give each screen a unique identifier so if we just go here to screen one and we just type out dot tag you'll see that in this modifier it takes in a hashable object now we need this to change based on the value of this changing so we actually want to give our screen one the tag of screen one here so in order to do this we just need to say screen dot one like so so now whenever the value in here is dot is equal to one it will show this screen and for screen two we want to do a similar thing but this time rather than it being screen dot one we want it to be screen dot Two. so whenever the value within screen changes to two it will switch to this screen okay cool so now we've set up the basis of changing between screens but we've not actually used any kind of like action to manually programmatically change between them so what we want to do is we actually want to add a button onto the screen that actually does the logic which changes this value here screen by using this function so in order to do that because this is at the root of our application we're going to use the environment object property wrapper and also the modifier so that our both our screens can access this router so the first thing we're going to do is after our tag for our screen one 
we're going to type environment object and then the environment object we're going to pass in is our router like so and then within our screen one when we go inside of it we're going to give it the environment object property wrapper our environment object is the same type as our source of truth tab router so we're just literally passing in our router into our environment object which then gets passed into this screen here so now what we want to do is actually update our SwiftUI preview also because if we don't add in the environment object on our SwiftUI preview it can cause it to crash so it's a good habit to also add this in before you do anything else so let's do that now cool so this just takes in the tab router and then now what we need to do is create our button within our Z stack. So we've got to add this into a V stack and then with our button, we're going to call the function to switch to screen two. So I'm just going to type this out and then we'll break it down. So now what we have is our text and button within a V stack and within our button, we just got some text in a label that says switch to screen two. And whenever you tap on this button, what's going to happen is it's going to call the function to change the value for the screen to two and then that will cause our tab view to update and re-render and show the right screen. So now let's actually just run this on the simulator and see what happens. You'll see that it changes the screen two programmatically so we don't actually need to tap on our tab bar. So this is another way for you to easily change the screens on your application programmatically within a tab view if you're working with deep links or some other kind of action. Now let's repeat the exact same steps, but this time we'll do it for our screen two. So again, for screen two, we're going to add in the environment object like so. And then within our screen two, we're going to give it the environment object property wrapper at the top here. And then before we actually add in our button, again, just make it a good habit to update our SwiftUI preview by injecting our environment object in, like so. And then we're going to update our Z stack with a V stack that switches to screen one. So let's do that now. So now, if we was to run this, so now if I was to switch to screen two, you can see it switches to screen two. And if I want to switch back to screen one, it switches back to screen one. So we've got desired outcome and we're able to dynamically switch between our screens via this button and also on the bottom of our tab bar as well. So pretty neat. So that's everything in today's video. If you enjoyed it, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel by hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell to get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.